I felt like an adulterer. 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 I walked away and I was like, I'm worthless. I've destroyed my marriage. This is so dumb. I don't know why I'm doing this. You just make it more complicated. One of the most healingest podcasts out in the space. So it's about to be double healing up on here because Harley Initiated and their future wifey podcast has gotten wow. together. And we are here rocking with the host of the show. We in here rocking with man Latarius Whitfield. I'm going to give you an example of something that I shared. It's called the feather story. Wow. So, wow. Yes, I believe that you should find somebody compatible. I was so selfish. Mm. I started thinking about the last woman years ago that I messed with before I got married. I'm a firm believer that a good man can cheat. Oh my God, this is weird. I'm here now. I said, <laughs> I said, y'all giving them a voice about what healing looks like. They say marriage actually brings out the worst. Protect this man at all costs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I dare you, brother out there, just say. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Yo, can I just give a shout out to Hardly Initiated Platform, man? Because yes. because of this platform, we are able to be in the room with some of the greats. Yes. And today we got a relationship great. Yes, this is actually the collaboration that y'all have been asking Facts. us to put together for so long. Because right here, we are sitting here with the host, of one of the hottest podcasts out <clears throat> in the space, one of the most healingest <laughs> podcasts out in the space. So it's about to be double healing <laughs> up on here because Harley Initiated and their future wifey podcast has gotten wow. together. And we are here rocking with the host of the show. We in here rocking with my man Latarius Whitfield. Welcome to Harley. Man, what what's going on, Kings, man? It's an honor to be here. Yes, yeah, man. We're we going to have fun today. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah we're going to talk. Definitely. Yes, because you're yeah. always getting into other people's business. So now we're going to get in my business. business. Now you're in, in the hot seat. I'm yes. in the hot seat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because today, let me tell you what we're talking about. Okay. We ain't send them no show man, notes. Send me nothing. We ain't tell them what we're talking uh -huh. about. You stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. I'm trying to tell you. But today, we are talking about why men cheat. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Well, 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 well. You know, because women, women want to figure that out, you know, uh, yeah. women and men, actually. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of um, the show's goal is to help people uh, put themselves in position for long term relationships. Yeah. But we know things don't always go the best. And yeah. cheating is one of those main reasons that's driving a wedge between these uh, not so healthy relationships. And not even just the main reason. I think that might have been something that you experienced as well. So uh, before I actually get into, you know, the whys. Let's get into your story, your background a bit, because you were married at once. And kind of take us back there. When did you get married? How long was it? Kind of walk us through that. Got married at the tender age of 28, mm. Um, mm. not knowing what marriage was really about. Grew up in the church, and we hear this word marriage all the time, but we don't understand uh, the magnitude and the brevity when you take those vows. And so um, got married at 28. To a woman I love so much, she was, we met when I was around 22, uh, dated her for about five years, uh, but I knew that this was the woman that I wanted to marry, shoot, what, six months in, um, and was my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, became my best friend, still to this very day, we have a great relationship. Matter of fact, I'm closing on the house, don't know when this episode will air, but um, Three days from now, I'll be closed on the house, and she's the realtor uh, that's representing me on that house. Wow. So, wow. So, so we have a great relationship. I have a whole lot of realtor friends and all that, and I said, I'm going to call my ex-wife and let her do that and let her make this money. And so, um, and so that's what that is. Show so, how rich I am now. <laughs> <laughs> which, which was kind of awkward because I was like, how is this going to come off? Like, is this going to, but she, me and her had such a great relationship. She was just like, thank you. I need this money. Let's, let, let's do this. And so, and I already had picked the house out and everything. So all okay. she had to do is just drop the paperwork. Yeah. So it was just very, we didn't have to go see different properties. It was the easiest check she ever got. Lay down. Uh, so it, it was great. So, um, Met her at a young age, decided to marry her. And you said, was it six months when you actually popped the question? No, six months after I knew that I would be marrying this woman. But I was mm. like 20, what was I, 22 years old or something, you know? So mm. I wasn't quite ready to get married. I was young. and But I said, this is the woman I was going to marry. I was chasing my dream as a national playwright, director, and producer at the time. And she was an actress. And so it was like a perfect marriage, you okay. know? 
uh, a marriage of purpose. And so that's what I did. And um, we began the data, went through premarital counseling, talked about different things that I felt like would be issues that, that uh, would cause a divide down the line. Of course, in that time, churches would be like, oh, you'll get over it. Y'all going to grow well. Y'all going to get, you know, this is a change. This is a change. And when those things didn't change is what allowed me to step outside. So what? Well, that's a good point. See, because y'all did it right. Y'all went ahead and got the counseling. Mm-hmm. You met at 22. So y'all didn't get married until you say 28. So y'all yeah. even, you vet it. Y'all had a little she relationship. She was four years older than me. So I was 28 and she was 32. Okay. And you, okay. She's yeah. mature. So now what were those things, though, that you found in counseling that was, you know. So this is the thing that I never uncover. I never uncover her in the relationship. So what I always say that the reason why I cheated was my lack of integrity. Because no matter what somebody does to you, it doesn't give you permission to actually cheat. Because one thing that she hit me with that really like struck, struck me to the core, she said, when you cheated on me, I wanted to get back at you and cheat on you, but I never want to become you. And what she said Mm. in that moment was, your integrity was so low, your moral character was so low, I will never stoop to that level in order to get back at you with revenge. And I was like, ugh, because I actually wanted her to cheat and get back because I felt so worthless. Matter of fact, I was the dude that would always tell my homeboys, listen, uh, that would be cheating on their girlfriends or their wives or whatever. Why are you cheating on your wife? That's crazy. Why get married if you're going to cheat? And they will always tell me, when you get married, then you can talk to me about it. I was like, no, nah, if I get married, I ain't going to cheat. Blah, 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 blah. And I will always so many men say that. I would say that all the time. And then when I got married and certain things began to happen in my marriage, I was like, I, I sought outside attention to fill the void that was in my marriage. And what year was that, by the way, when you first cheated? First year. You cheated first year? First year. Now, had you were there ever any prior instances of infidelity? Yes, in my in, yes. Before we got married, I cheated on her. I cheated on her because uh, we were together for about six years uh, prior to, and of course, she's this. She was this devout Christian who didn't want to have sex outside of marriage, and I was like, okay, I can try to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that just didn't work with my 22, 23, 24 year old hormones. Just wasn't in alignment. So wait, 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 wait. Y'all have sex from we did. We, you know, you had your little slip ups. You know, you okay, had your little okay, moments where you do part, that. I got yeah, you. but I she got was you. a type that was like, I just don't want to do this. Got so you. it was like she would do it, but then you know, deep down inside, she's not all in emotionally and physically and yeah. all that. And so I was just like, dang, I don't want to be that. So let me just get someone on the side. Let me get someone on the side, and then I'll quote unquote honor her if there's ever such thing I honor her not to have sex with her but then i'm gonna cheat on her so it's just crazy toxic mentality that i was operating in and so uh but then she knew that i ended up telling her about end up telling her about that whole situation you told her about oh yeah we had, during we had marriage or before no this is before while we were dating because we broke up i was like this is not gonna work you know what i'm saying like it's just it's, it's those things that, and that's why I said the, the interesting thing about it when you find people in their certain stage and age is that at 24, 25, because uh, I got married at 28, when I cheated at 24, 25, well, and it was just this one particular person, it was like, it was hard to reconcile the why. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I ain't having sex and I'm horny, so I'm going to go get it elsewhere. Uh, it took years to unpack why I did it. We look at the thing about, uh, you heard me say a lack of integrity. Yes, that's a catalyst because if you lack integrity, you'll do a whole lot of things. But it was the brokenness where I felt the void that was attached to my masculinity, the need for sex. Now, when you look at Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, yeah, that is an actual need. We need human connection, attraction, attention, physicality, and all that type of stuff. She wasn't that type that was physical like that. She expressed herself a different way um, that I didn't appreciate at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like when you start doing the love languages or whatnot, you say, this person is a gift giver. This person is words of affirmation. This person is quality time. Well, hers was quality time. Mine was physical touch. So if we spending quality time together and I'm physical touch, we need to go in and have sex. That just mm. makes sense. Quality time physical touch actually we should have sex at this moment <laughs> right but she like no i just want to spend time with you and i was like but where do i get my knees met you know mm. what i'm saying so it's it's those things that we talked about in premarital counseling that 
they were teaching us to say, hey, listen, come come across your need and give your mate what they need. Give her the quality time and you give him the physical touch. But she just wasn't that type of person that had a need for sex like that. So quick question mm -hmm. for you, because we had uh, J.A., Jeremy Anderson, yes. came on the show. Shout out to that and, king. Yes, yeah, shout out to him. And uh, he had a bit of our moment with us because he talked about how he um, had resentment toward his wife because she wasn't providing him that level of physical touch. But he talked about how he pretty much dis disciplined himself to get over it, and they find other ways to kind of make this thing work. Now, of course, the comments on that was crazy. The main thing was, hey, you are in a relationship with that woman. That's toxic. Love That's toxic. She ain't supporting you. Right. She ain't rubbing on you, loving on you like yeah. you want to be loved on. <laughs> exactly. She's neglecting your needs. All of that was being said. So really? my question for you, is is that an aspect of discipline that a man should honor or should he just altogether find him a more suitable woman that will supply him with that specific need? It's a that's a it's a catch twenty two. A yes, I believe that you should find somebody compatible because compatibility goes a long way. If you're compatible, is that your need? Find someone that provides that need for you. The other part that I began to uncover the more I've spoken to different women that have been on my podcast. Back in 2021, the statistic was one in five women deal with sexual assault or have dealt with a sexual assault experience. Well, now the statistics are one in four. So then when you look at that statistic, then we have to understand the school of thought is, why isn't my woman being physical with me like that? That's where now the patient and the discipline comes in if that was the case. Now with my ex-wife, that wasn't her testimony, but mm -hmm. going forward, if because of my need for sex is high, then I have to look at it and say, hey, if this is the person that God intended for me to be with, then let's have these conversations. Is, it, is the reason why you're not physical because you've dealt with a sexual assault? Now let me operate and discipline and let me also operate in patience to be able to cultivate that out of my woman. And so that's the catch 22. And so that's about the short end of the, 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 the question that you asked. I got that. Was it, was it just that though? Like, was it just the fact that it, it wasn't, you wasn't getting sex enough? Was no. That it? It, that wasn't it. That wasn't even a big issue, to be honest with you. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't a big let, issue. Let's get to it. That's the part that I said I would never say. Oh. Whoa. Yes. Not, not on Harley and this yes, shit. We got to get the exclusive, cause, cause, right? Because in that, because I'm going to tell you, because that's the uncovering of my wife. I've always wanted her, okay. my ex-wife. That's the reason why I've wanted her to come on my podcast and talk. But she's like, I'm not a, I'm not a, a public person like that. I don't talk about stuff like that. I don't share that. So I'll just say, all right, well, cool. Because at the end of the day, one of the things that she always told me to do, even when we were married, when I wanted to talk about my infidelity, she was like, don't talk about it. She said, I don't want to have these conversations with my family about your infidelity. Don't. That's when we were married. So when I got, when I got divorced, I said, you know what? I'm going to talk about this. And that episode, I shared with her the episode, um, it was called To Cheat or Not to Cheat. And I had Joey Greco from the TV show Cheaters. I had him on the podcast. I <laughs> shared that. He's a legend. Yeah, I didn't know legend. you had him. I got to watch yes, that episode. I had him on because it was a good friend of mine. And I said, listen, I said, we're going to talk about this. And that's when I revealed me cheating in my past marriage. Now, was, I've been divorced five years at this point. Uh, my podcast had just started. I had 500 subscribers. I said, I'm going to lose all 500 when I, when I share this. <laughs> I said, God, why are you asking me to do this? This is career suicide. This just does not make any sense. God said, do it. And then it just started growing even more. Women would come in my DMs, talk about how they cheated on their husbands, how mm -hmm. they, and their husbands have no idea, or how they cheated on their boyfriends. Their boyfriends have no idea. And men started sharing with me. And I'll have these private moments on Instagram, uh, a video call where I'm talking to couples, walking them through this on the, you know, in the back channels, talking to people about how to get over infidelity. But it was through my vulnerability that opened up the door for people to be able to heal because I've, gave, I've given them a voice about what healing looks like and how to come forth with your infidelity. Now you, you did, you, just, you said something very interesting. You said that I, I was like, so shame, and so much shame that, yeah. that you wanted your wife to even cheat back at yes. that point. Do you think that you, like, with who you were, especially as a man, yeah. you could have survived that incident? Nobody gave me an excuse to get a divorce. 
Mm. See, what's so crazy about it is that we want these, it's a toxic mentality. It's like I say, oh, I cheated on you, I feel worthless. Because you got to understand, here I am in the church, I'm a believer, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man of God, and here I am operating at my lowest version. So then I go, well, how do I reconcile this? No one knows. Like, this is something I'm privately going through internally. So I'm going, like I said, I was a horrible cheater because I had such a conscience. I would be like, hmm. I'm going to die on the way going home. I know God is going to kill me. I'm going to die. I'm going to get in a wreck while I'm driving and then they're going to say where was he coming from and then here they're going to find out the woman I just slept with she's going to come and talk to police I was the last person seen with him all this crazy stuff I'll be like all in my head like about all this type of stuff and then after I get over the initial situation, I'll go back and be like, I'm not going to do this no more. And I go, okay, God, heal me. Let me go through this. I, I got to, I wouldn't even say heal me. I say, God, keep me from doing it again. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be wise enough not to create boundaries where I wouldn't re-enter those situations again. And so that's the, that's the conundrum that I was in is saying, I don't want to be a cheater. I don't even like cheaters, even when they're my homeboys and that type stuff. I always feel like that's they're, they're cowards or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And here I am being the biggest coward. I'm cheating on my wife, going home, acting like everything is cool. Mm. And so that's where I said that, you know what, what to make it easier is if she cheats back, then now she can be as bad as I am. And now you can't, because she wasn't the type to throw it in my face. She was never like, you a cheater. You Never once has she ever called me. Dang, I just thought about it. Never once has she ever called me a cheater. Wow. Never once has she ever said, you you worthless, you this. Never once has she said that. Mm. But it was through, but she watched me walk through that process too because once it came out and I told everything, I went through this program at my church called Celebrate Recovery. And I went there and I said, I'm about to heal. I'm about to go and so because the whole church know you cheating now. Well, yeah, well the people, the people that's to celebrate recovery, they sure did. But I knew about all they dirt too, so we all there together. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. like, hey, I'm cheating with, with, with women I know. Y'all over sleep with prostitutes and everything else. Wow. So it's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, hey, we finna talk about it all. So so, but it was I would never be that transparent and vulnerable. I was like, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna take it to the grave. And so when God told me to go and speak to people about that, oh, it. It was a game changer because I would never be public and talk about that. I would never share that. And I began to share that. That's the reason why I can sit on my platform and share one of my worst moments in my marriage and share that openly and be like, I don't care what y'all say. Y'all ain't got a heaven or hell to put me in. Because they didn't know that even during that, I never justify what I did. I never felt like, well, this is what you get. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which is the reason why my ex-wife was able to heal from it easy because she said, you're taking accountability for it. Like you're, you're going, you're, I'm not telling you, you need to go get therapy. You know, need to go get counseling. You're saying I'm about to get counseling. I'm going to get therapy. You're about to put people, accountability people around you. I started putting people around me where I would talk to other men that I'd be like, hey, listen, my wife is doing this. She's doing X, Y, Z. And they'd be like, hey, listen, let's pray. Let's walk through it. Let's talk it out. You know, um, and all those sort of things. When we, you want to get real deep, what happened was is that the way I would cope at the beginning was I would masturbate. I was like, all right, if my wife ain't giving me none, I'm going to masturbate. We're going to go there. We're going to talk, right? Uh, so, yeah. so I said, I'm a masturbate. And I said, if my wife is not sexual, like I would desire her to be, I'm a masturbate. I'll take care of it. But then the more I masturbated, first year of marriage, the more I started resenting her. I said, here I am married and I'm over here masturbating. At 28 years old, I did all the work to marry this woman, get this beautiful ring on her finger, had this beautiful wedding, and I got to take care of myself, and I felt ashamed. And so I remember, um, I remember she, uh, she would get this lubrication, and I took the lubrication in the shower, and that's where I would take care of myself. And then one day I ended up leaving in the shower, left. I was like, I got out the house. I said, oh, my God. I forgot what I left in that shower. I said, oh my God, she gonna know that I masturbate. I, I came back home. Was that a secret? Like you didn't want your no, wife to know? No, I didn't want to know that because I felt like to know that I have to take care of myself is showing her that she's not woman enough to take care of okay. me. I can imagine so, she would have so, been hurt by yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I thought. So then I came home, I looked in the shower, I said, it's not there. I looked in the nightstand, I said, it's there. So I said, we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room. I said, so I see you found the lubrication. She was like, she was like, yeah. I said, what you think about it? She was like, what you mean? She said, well, you had to take care of yourself. I said, how you feel about that? She said, I don't feel like nothing. You got to take care of yourself. I said, you don't feel a problem in your husband has to resort. This is the first year of marriage to masturbating 
to take care of himself sexually. She's like, hmm. And that's when it resentment set in. That's where I was like, you don't care about me. You don't, you don't, I'm doing this. And 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 so then what happened, if you really want to talk, hardly initiated. So <laughs> I said, I said, I said, okay, okay, now how can I reconcile this? Before when I would masturbate, because I never watched porn, I never did all that stuff. I would masturbate on the image of my wife. I would think about my wife. Wow. And so then, because I kept saying that people in the, in the in the military and they go off and they doing this or whatever, you know, how do they keep themselves from cheating? Those that don't cheat and what is this? Do they think about their wives that do this? I'm, I'm talking, I'm very cerebral, so I'm thinking all this through. So I said, if I masturbate thinking about my wife, then it's okay. Then, then, then I'm still visualizing her. When I built up resentment, I could no longer uh, uh, masturbate thinking about her. And so I started thinking about the last woman years ago that I messed with before I got married. Wow. And then that's the person I manifested back into my life. Wow. I went to a fashion show and I was like, oh, she walked up. She said, hey, how you doing? I said, oh, you know, I'm feeling guilty because I'm like, I just right. thought about you earlier today, you know? And so I'm going, what in the world? What is this? She's like, hey, so how are things going? How's married life? I said, married life is going great. One thing that I used to always do is... I'm never going to uncover my wife. I just realized that even when I was cheating on her, you could never speak ill about my wife. Whatever woman, I was like, hold on, hold on. Like, if you, if you ever wanted me to leave you alone, say something about my wife at that mm. time. So I'll be like, well, your wife ain't take, hold on. We, we ain't talking about none of that. What we gonna yeah. have is whatever men you gonna have and we don't even bring her up. We ain't finna talk about all that. Okay, yeah. well, dog, can't talk about your wife. Can't, they would get all mad about it. Can't talk about it. <laughs> right. like, exactly. So, so I would always keep her that and that's interesting because even when you ask questions about that, I won't uncover her in the conversation even to this very day. Right. But it's the, it's the situation of those moments and so she started talking and we, I went to her house one day and she was like, you remember when we did this? We was right over there on the chase lounge and we did this, this. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then she was like, so what's up? What's this, this, this? And I was like, ah. I said, oh my God, this is, this is weird. I'm here now. Wow, this is, this was happening. And I end up, no, that day I didn't do it. I left and I was like, ooh, I got away. I said, I wanted to so bad, but I got away. I went home, I was like, oh, this is, this is terrible. But then that seed was planted in my mind. I said, wow, yeah, when I remember when we did, you know, have sex, it was so free, it was so cool, it was not restricted, it was not, it didn't feel like the pressures of what I'm feeling like in this marriage. Uh, this is a beautiful monologue that in August Wilson's um, Fences that Rose says to, uh, that Rose shares in that. She's talking, don't you think I want to go up in a room and, and forget about the problems of this world and shut off the, the problems of this world and have sex? See, a woman understands that, yes, she, those that don't cheat but may have the desire to because of whatever her husband is doing or not doing or whatnot, that monologue like spoke to my heart because Rose shares that, yeah, a woman may think of that as well. When men, when, when I was in that moment, I was like, I just didn't want to, I didn't know how to cultivate that out of my wife. I didn't know how to, I was just like, you just selfish. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You just, you just don't want to take care of me and you cool with that. Like the, the counselor said that you should be doing this and you're okay with that. Didn't understand it. So then I got away the first day and then a couple of days later I sat back, she called me um, and I said, all right, I'm going to come over there. And when I went there, I knew that I was going to have sex with her. What was lifted up off of me in that moment, when I say like, it felt like the veil was just torn away from me. I felt exposed. I felt like I had instantly the scarlet letter A tattooed on my forehead. Mm. Like I felt like an adulterer. I walked away and I was like, I'm worthless. I've destroyed my marriage. This is terrible. I felt it. Because what we don't talk about is the oneness that happens during the vows and during the wedding ceremony, it's a oneness that's created in that moment. And what I felt lifted off of me, I just felt like God's hand just did like this off of me. Mm. And then I went home and I was just like, she, she gonna know I cheated. Oh my God, mm. she, I, I look like it. I, I probably look like a cheater. Oh, I smell like a cheater. Let's go take a shower, take a shower. Okay, I can't have sex with my wife after I just had sex with somebody mm. else. So we just gonna be okay with whenever it decides to come along again, then we'll come back to it or whatnot. And then, okay, God, let me, rid myself of the shame of this, let me recommit myself to my marriage and let's go all in. But then the issues still prevailed and it was like, okay, this is, this is crazy. So then I started developing a habit of cheating on my wife with that woman. 
You know what I'm saying? And then when that woman expired, when that situation ended, then I'll wait a long time and then I'll end up finding somebody else and we end up. And it always happened from moments of um, one of the things that I realized I had was the issue of codependency. Mm. Never drank a day in my life, never smoked weed, never did drugs, never had a porn addiction, but I thrived off of words of affirmation. That's my love language. So words of affirmation. So when someone begins to share, oh, you're so amazing, Latarius, this is great. I'd be like, oh, wow, what? And then my ex-wife wouldn't share that. My ex-wife, I'd be like, uh, so what you think about this? I did this, I was like, oh, that's nice. Mm. I mean, but I did this, okay, okay. I said, wow, this is this Was, was she always that way or did it? Always, she's a very low key person. Like she just, she's very low key and chill. She's like, okay. I'd be like, Hey, this is this is interesting, but I didn't realize the need that I had to be to be applauded. Right. To be, I needed my cheerleader. I need somebody to be like, "You're doing a great job." And is that codependent, or is that just being a man? Well, it's, well, it can be because a lot of men need that. That's why if you go look on the on the side of a football field or basketball, then you got cheerleaders around it. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. And so, so it's a reason why you don't see women basketball players, and then you see men up there talking rah rah rah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't you don't see that. You know what I'm saying? So it could be innately uh, the foundation of what a man operates on. But with me, when it comes from an unhealthy standpoint where you got to go outside of your vows to get it right. and you're uncovering your spouse in it, that's when it's moved to an unhealthy space. Right. Um, and so, and then the truth be told, we should be so grounded within ourselves that if our lover isn't applauding us, that we go, you know what, God, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. And I'm going to apply myself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I remember when Snoop Dogg or whatever did this, when he got his uh, star on the Walk of Fame, he said, no, nah, I'm going to apply myself. I'm happy for myself. I'm just for myself. <laughs> I was like, is that arrogance or is that self-awareness and self-assuredness to say, I am proud of me at this moment? And so that's where I want to operate in today is the place where a place where I say, listen, if I'm not getting the, the pom-pom shaking, if I'm not getting go to terrace that I, as a man that I don't need outside attention, outside affirmation, outside of my woman in order to seek validation outside of her. Now, you, you mentioned not being able to cultivate a certain uh, space with, right. with your woman. So do you think that there was opportunity for you to do some things to kind of get her to reciprocate what you actually did need? One thousand percent what does that even look like like what does cultivating your woman actually look like for some dudes that's i know some dudes struggling with that right now oh, they're yeah. not doing what he want what, what 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 are the actions that's behind that i'm gonna give you an example of something that i share it's called the feather story my wife came home one day my ex-wife came home one day and she had this feather and she was like hey i want you to rub this feather on me you know when we make love i want you to rub this on me i was like what am I gonna do with a feather? What? What? <laughs> a feather? What? I was like, you just making it more complicated. And I was like, <laughs> no, no other woman needed this. We didn't have a feather. It doesn't require all of that. <laughs> and she was just like rubbing. So then I said, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I'm just rubbing on her stomach all haphazardly. I'm doing like this. And I said, this is so stupid. This is so dumb. I don't know why I'm doing this. And in that moment, God brought that back to me like last year. He said, you remember when you talking about cultivating all that type of stuff and, and now you say you want to create a safe space for your woman? Let's talk about that feather. And I said, oh, I was so selfish. I was so selfish. Mm. She wanted to make love to me. I wanted to have sex with her. She wanted me to be gentle with her. I just wanted to go ahead and get my quote unquote rocks off. She wanted me to, be, to handle her delicately like a feather. And I just wanted to just jump on in. And I said, God, I am so sorry. I, I, I apologize because at the end of the day, what I did internally was minimize her needs based upon what the other women didn't need. And I was like, the other women didn't say it verbally, but internally I was like, the other women didn't need all that. And now here you, well, you ain't, you ain't got the other women no more. This is the woman you made a vow with. Mm. Do whatever it takes to create a safe space with this woman that, you, that now carries your last name. These other women don't carry your last name. This one does. When the Bible says we become one, at the end of the day, we become one flesh. So if my hand hurts, 
I'm going to put a bandage on my hand. I ain't going to say, why you need a bandage? Why are you hurting? I'm not, going, I'm not going to criticize my hand for hurting. I'm going to meet the needs of my hand. If we're one flesh, we're one body, the need of my wife has to be taken care of. And, out, and, and the main way to take care of it is out of selflessness to say, you need this? Is this what you're going to need to be the best version of yourself? Here it is. I'm finna, you're going to have Big Bird come roll across your body. Whatever you need. You're going to have all the feathers you need, doggone it. You know, and just meet the needs and literally make love to that woman. And that's what she was basically trying to tell me without just straight up saying, make love to me. She gave you an opportunity. And what's crazy is that you didn't take your own advice. Because you wanted, you wanted her to give you something that she wasn't necessarily accustomed to doing or Facts. felt the most comfortable doing. And when she gave you the opportunity, you actually, and like you said, did it haphazardly. Yep. And women, man, they pick up on every Everything. single thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Latarius, I'm disgusted with you, man. I'm a terrible person. I'm a terrible human being. Oh. But a, a lot of men, a lot of men, that yeah. story, is exemplified no, absolutely the issue. absolutely and, and i want to ask you because see what i do like about that situation is that she actually did at that point for whatever reason maybe it was from what you said she took initiative yeah mm -hmm. she actually did take initiative to to bring you and show like hey look this is me take putting a, a step in the door to do this what would you say to a brother that's in a space where he needs to cultivate his woman and he does not see initiative so like, what is that look like? What does cultivation in your woman look like when she, you don't really feel like she's trying? How do you spark her to try to take some initiative? I think what happens is you have to listen. She said it before, you just missed it. She said it probably year one of your marriage, year one of your relationship, for the first six months. She said it, we just don't hear it. Uh, a lot of times we, we talk about active listening and I had a problem of, and this is why this podcast was so important for me to create Dear Future Wifey is because I will always listen to respond versus listen to listen. And so on my podcast, I just be like this mm -hmm. and I'll just listen to people and it's allowed me to dial into them on a deeper level. Well, in my marriage, I would be listening to respond and, I, and, and a lot of times I was responding with, you ain't doing this for me. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, it, internally I would feel like that and be like, and didn't even think about, oh, I'm telling you, it literally took, we've been divorced with, at that time, seven years, last year would be uh, seven years. And I go, oh, the feather story. Like it just, it just came out the blue. <laughs> it just, it, I was like, oh my God, this is, and what happened was this. I had a video that went viral where I talked about I'm not concerned about uh, the body count of a woman. I said, she could have been with 25, 35 men. Uh, the version of her that I'll get is a version no man has ever gotten because I know how to cultivate that woman. And um, that video just took off with women like, protect this man at all costs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? I already know. <laughs> yeah, protect him at all costs. And I was just like, wow. And then I shared another video, didn't get as many views that said, but the reason why I learned this is because I didn't provide a safe space for a woman. Now that video may have got like 75,000, the other one got like 6 million, you know? And I was like, wow, that's interesting. But in that video, what prompted that video was God began to tell me about the feather story. And I said, wow, if we listen keenly enough to the needs of a woman, she's sharing it. She may share it in a touch. She'd be like, hey baby, can you, she may lay on your shoulder, but then every time she lays on you, you think it's time for you to have sex, so you start putting your hand between her legs. She's like, come on, just, just lay here. And you're like, ah, well, she just said it. Just lay here. Mm. Just, just let me find this moment. Just lay on your shoulders. That's enough. Let her lay on her shoulders. Let, give her a massage. She say, my back hurt. Give, a, uh, give her a massage without it leading to sex, you know, and just walk away. She'll be like, oh, that's it. You're like, yeah, I took care of you. She's gonna be like, well, okay. And the next thing you know, she may flip it on you. Like, you better come over and give me some. Mm. But, but, but initially, she was just like, oh, my shoulders hurt. Give me a massage. you like, all right, this is foreplay. No, let it just stay right there and be like, you good? You taken care of? And so if you listen to your woman, because all women are different, that very rarely would you find anybody that has never communicated what their needs are. It's very rare. If you listen long enough and you listen to the beginning of your relationship and the things y'all got in arguments about, disagreements about, points of contention about, they've said it. They'll say, you don't spend enough time with me. you like, oh, yeah, I'm working, I'm doing this or whatever, blah, 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 blah. It may show up in, I'm not gonna have sex with you. 
she ain't never said, give me time, I'll give you sex. But mm -hmm. but so so you just say, all right, she don't she don't want to give me none or whatever. What did she say? Her need was, you don't spend time with me. You don't take me out enough. You don't tell me you love me enough. You don't tell me you're, I'm beautiful. Whatever those things that she said that she stopped saying, yeah. and you feel whatever she was doing for you that stopped, she stopped doing, reverse engineer that thing and say, what was she asking me for? Because she stopped on this and I love when she was cooking for me, but now she don't cook for me because she said, I don't appreciate it. Why she say I don't appreciate her cooking? I've always loved for her to cook. Now she say I don't appreciate her. First she said I don't appreciate the cooking. Now she said I don't even appreciate her. <laughs> what in the world is going on? I do love when she cook. She don't appreciate what? What is she doing? Oh, she's cooking for me, but I don't even say thank you no more because mm. I'm just so used to it, and I feel like that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and then so if you now she's cooking for you, like you know what? You know what? You and I both have day jobs. We both work. And you take time every day. I don't know how you do it. You're a superwoman. You go, you cook. I mean, you go work. You're a boss at your job. You come home, and then you cook for me. I thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're an amazing woman. She's going to be like, what? Yeah, and I just want to show you that I appreciate you. And to, uh, tomorrow, you ain't got to cook. I'm going to take you out to this restaurant you've been always talking about you want to go to. What? I guarantee you're going to get you some after that. I guarantee you your needs are going to be met. Women are incubators. You can take something, deposit it in a woman. She's going to always give you back more than you've ever deposited into her. But if you deposit selfishness in her, if you deposit uh, um, um, anger because you're mad at her all the time, she's going to incubate that anger and you're going to get it back in a different way. You give her a seed, she incubates that, gives you a child. She gives you something greater than you'll ever give her. And so that's what I say for a man who says, yeah, she ain't telling me what she wants. She said it. You just wasn't listening. And I'm, I, you know, yeah, I, that, I that's very, how, very, very practical advice. Very practical. Yeah. And I can see how men struggle with that because like most guys, they have different women to meet different needs. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like at this, I have this one here for some sex. This one here, I like to go have some fun with. This one here, I like to do this. Yep. So now to have to meet, have one woman meet all your needs can almost feel like a very weak place for a man. Because if it's not working, like if the need ain't, it's like almost like the woman, you think the woman broke. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what's going on right now? What's, I got it. Like you think you got to go elsewhere and you may not have even trained yourself to know how to cultivate a woman. Most guys not even trained in cultivation in a woman because that's not how they've operated. It's like, okay, I'm, I can't get it here. Let me go somewhere else. Yes. So I, I, I can imagine like cultivation is really a skill set. Yeah. It takes an exceptional, what well, should be standard, but an exceptional level of attentiveness. And I think most guys, when they realize or they come to the realization that effective communication is important to the relationship, they think that is us clearly stating intentions, needs, expectations, but they also have to understand the dynamics of a woman. Yeah. And you have to learn how to decode and decipher these certain subtle communications. So is there a, a, a certain strategy that you have for learning how a woman operates? Well, like I said, every woman is different talk one of the things that they say most men don't do unfortunately is they don't talk enough they don't mm. share their heart they don't ask a woman just ask her just try it. just i dare you brother out there just say baby what, what do you need more of me she ain't gonna say nothing she's gonna say well i'm glad you asked <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you asked. what made you just ask me that oh my god That's i've been wanting you to say that for what made you, what, what, what did you watch in order for you to say that? Well, I just, I don't know. I just feel like I just want to know what, 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 what would you like more of me? I would like for you to do X, Y, Z. And she may give you a whole list because you may have left her uncovered for a long time. Well, man. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. You don't do this. You don't help with the kids. You don't spend time with this. You don't say, and then don't get defensive. You ask. She told you, be a good student. Write it down. Okay. You need this. You need this. Okay. I can't promise I can do all of this in the next three days, but I'm going to work on all these things and I'm going to continue to have checkpoints to ask how I'm doing. I said one of the things that uh, I wish marriages had, and this is one of the things that I'm going to enact in my next marriage, is reviews. On a job, they're not going <laughs> to let you just be doing whatever you want to do for, for a whole year. You, you have uh, uh, a 90-day review, 
You know, um, and, and it's funny when you get hired at a job, what's the first thing they put you on? They'll put you on a probationary, a probationary period. period. Yeah, yeah and they're they going to say, all right, we hired you. You did good on the interview. We feel like we chose the right person. But we're going to see if what we feel is actually what we're going to get in return. Yep. And so they'll watch you. They'll see if you come to work on time. They see if you can take uh, orders or whatnot, take direction, see how you perform on whatever that job is. And at the end of it, they go, your probationary period is over. If, if you failed in that situation, I'm sorry, but we, we're not, we're no longer going to. Not going to be able to do we're it. We're not going to be able to do it no more. But it was, it was great while we had you. But uh, go ahead and see HR um, and get your little box. They're going to have some security walk walk you out. If we had that in marriages where we say checkpoints, 90 day reviews, 60 day reviews, whatever, and literally go back and say, what am I doing? How am I performing? And literally have it questions, points out. This is what I need. This is who I am. And y'all look at it and be like, you've been doing good on communication, quality time. Not so well, but I understand because you had a loss. Your, 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 your father is battling cancer. They spend a lot of time in the hospital right now, whatever. But y'all can have checkpoints because what happens in marriages is when you hear a marriage that grew apart or you hear people say we got divorced for irreconcilable differences. Those are only problems that y'all couldn't resolve that y'all probably didn't spend enough time trying to resolve. Y'all just said we grew apart. I'm in this relationship. Yeah. How, well, how'd you grow apart from somebody? At the end of the day, that means that they went one direction and you went the other direction. We all evolve. And so giving each other grace for the evolution is what makes a relationship last till death do we part. So the person you said I do to at 25 is not going to be the same person that you still say I do to at 35 and 45 and 55 and definitely not 85. But if you go through those, those, those seasons together and be like, okay, when I met you, you were a school teacher. Now you're an entrepreneur trying to do a candle business. Well, you got to give that person a grace to say, as a human being, you have the right to not be doing the same thing you did at 25 and at 35. But what their needs are at 35 now running the candle business is going to look different from a teacher. They're going to school, doing what they do. They get so many, um, they get the summer off, you know, um, but now they're doing a the candle business. They may be working 18 hour days. They doing this. They need you to help. You ain't never need to help them as a teacher, you know, but now they're like, Hey, can you carry these boxes from the car? Hey, I'm going to go set up at a trade show. Can you come with me? Like, God, I ain't, I ain't want to be in the candle business. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like, but as your spouse, House, you need to be able to say, listen, this is my woman. This is my husband. I'm going to come alongside of them and help them continue to fulfill their purpose. And so just listening to that person and asking them, what do you need? They're going to always not. Now, if you got somebody that just don't talk and won't share what they need, or they're afraid that they're going to hurt your feelings if uh, they tell you that. That's another issue that you need to uncover because mm. that means that you haven't created a safe space where the person can be honest with you about what their needs are. And then, then at that point, then you need to get to therapy. Uh, I recommend therapy like crazy for, for husbands and wives or even dating relationships before you even get there. Let's talk about some stuff so that we can prevent some stuff before it happens in the future. I like that. And uh, Latere, so let me, so this is my personal opinion. Okay? Talk, let's talk. I'm a firm believer that a good man can cheat. Now, I think a good man, right, the, the, the not so savage one, is going to have that levels of remorse and guilt that we talked about, right? Yeah. And I know you went over some of the few steps that you can take to get over that. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you just because I think this is a, 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 a well, well uh, known debate. Do you think that coming forward with your infidelity is part of that, is a mandatory part of that healing process? Yes. Wow. Confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. That's a scripture. Confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. That's the initial process of healing. And it does two things in that process. A, you're able to admit. In the garden, they said, Adam, where are you? Well, of course, God knew where Adam was. But for him to say, hey, here I am, is another part of accountability. Because he already had sin. That's why he was hiding. So the first thing that we do when we do some wrong to somebody is we hide. I'm going to hide it. I'm going I'm to block this person or I'm going to get me another phone so I can have this woman on the side or whatever. It was a woman on my podcast named Raven Hartwell. Shout out to her. She cheated on her husband and moments later, I'm talking about moments, within the hour, called her husband and said, I just cheated on you. I saw the episode. I didn't yeah. like that. 
Why, I didn't like that. Why, why you like that she did it? What did you not like about that? I didn't like that he took it back. <laughs> 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 that hurt my feelings. It always just hurt my feelings. Why should he take cheeks. it back? I, <sighs> Feel like you got cheated on. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's what I, I Would you want a woman to take you back? I would. I would. But you see what I'm saying? We we want grace. I won't cheat. I ain't cheating. I don't even be in that situation. I ain't going to cheat when I'm married. Right. <laughs> I will never cheat. <laughs> the reality is the same grace we want extended to us is the same grace we should give. Mm. So a lot of men hated that episode. A lot of men was like, that woman is this and that woman that is that. That was you too. You, 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 you had commented on that. Rich comment. <laughs> I said, hardly initiated. But she never take it back. They went in on that. It, it's like, he's a simp. Why would you take a woman that? It's the same thing too when we look at the same men that were mad at me. Matter of fact, shout out to the men that made that video go viral about the, the body count because they were so mad at me. He's a simp. What kind of man says he he will take a woman that's been that, that's been with 25, 35? Uh, and I said, y'all don't understand. This is what you don't know. I have a lot of female friends. A lot of my female friends, you probably seen them on the podcast, have seen them somewhere and be like, ooh, if I get the opportunity, why I marry her? But you don't know her body count. Mm. And the reality is she will never tell you that because you know that if you have this toxic insecurity that you will never, she will never tell you the truth. She'll, she'll tell you a, comp, a number that you may be comfortable with, but you'll never fully know who, what, what her number really is. What I say is create, if I'm taking you flaws and all, whatever your decision, I said this best. I jumped on the live one day. This, this dude was on YouTube. He was just going off on me. He had my video up. He was like, I can't believe he's pandering, saying he'll want a woman. This, 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 this. I said, I'm going to pull up. Let's talk. So I said, <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm just that dude. I said, we can talk. I said, back in the day, I would have pulled up on you a different way, but I'm saved, so I'm going to pull up on you on these YouTube streets. And so I said, I said, so let's talk. I said, how do I fault a woman for running into a bunch of me's on her way to me? How do I fault her for running into a bunch of me's on the way to me? What I mean by that is that your boy had game. When I was in the streets, I could have sex with a woman real easily. It was, it was, it was easy. And so why would I get mad at her and say, well, you shouldn't have never had sex with anybody. You should have saved yourself for me. And I ain't saved myself for her. And so did I lose my value because I slept with people on the way and did she lose her value or did God come and redeem me because I was operating in a level of, uh, of, of brokenness that I didn't even realize my own body had value. See, men, we're not taught that our bodies have value too. You have these women that's taking these pinky promises and, and taking these vow of abstinence, but we don't hold ourselves to that same level of accountability. We can go smash the whole world, and we, and we bring all these bodies to the bedroom and say, you need to accept this. You done had sex with 75 women. She done had sex with seven. You're like, I can't believe you had sex with seven <laughs> women, dudes, wow. You had sex with six dudes and one woman. I can't believe that. She's like, that happened in college. I just, you're just, uh, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, and she said, How many have you had? A 75. I'm a man. No, I'm supposed to have sex with that. You ought to be happy. I only had sex with 75. It could have been 175. <laughs> you know, and it's like, what? What is this? It's, it's, it's a toxic mentality because we're all broken people looking for love. And whatever her pathway, especially when you begin to uncover what really led to the seven or the 27 or the 35, and then she begins to tell you that, yeah, but you didn't, what I never ever told a soul that I'm gifting you with. Never told any man I've ever dated, but I'm gifting you with this. When I was seven years old, I was sexually assaulted by my uncle. He was sexually assaulted me from seven years old to 13 years old. Does that give you another reference? Well, I... Well, I mean, but still, I mean, why couldn't you be the type that was, this is the person you want to marry, though. This is the person that you said you love. This is the person you care about. If your grace can't cover a woman that operated in the way that wasn't ideal for you, then you're not, you're not deserving of a wife anyway. You don't deserve to be married because she's going to do some things in that marriage, hopefully not cheat. <laughs> right. But she may do some things in the marriage that you may not feel is ideal. Can your grace cover her? Because you're going to do some things in the marriage that's not ideal that you're going to expect her grace to cover you. And that's when we take those vows and we say, for better, for worse, what does worse look like? We always think about better. The worse, grace is needed. For poor, grace is needed. Through, through, through sickness, grace is needed. And we never, ever think about the grace that keeps a marriage together. And that's why I say we don't have enough conversations about saying that, oh, yeah, this woman's body count. Well, I don't want her. 
Like, really? But then you go look at the superstars that you may see that may have a body count. You're like, oh, now, if I had a whoever this person is filling the name or whatever, you're like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll be with her. I'll marry her. I'll wife her. Really? Really? You'll you, you, you wife her. But the girl that, your coworker, or the woman that's not in the public eye, you don't have enough grace for her. It's crazy. We have this, we have this backwards mentality. And so I always say at the end of the day, we need to do love better by not only us being better, because that's the main part. We need to be better and do better so that we can receive better. So first of all, that's a valid argument about, not even argument, but lesson in just general of grace and being able to know when to employ it. But what's too much grace, right? Like, wh wh when is, <laughs> like, when do, <laughs> when do you leave? When is, that, when is that the healthy thing to do? When, yeah. when, when it brings out the worst in you. So like, for but, instance, see, but you know, here's a funny thing you say that. Yeah. Because we have, we, we, my summer, summer Harlan initiated favorite guests. Oh yeah, I know. Marriage Inc., right? Shannon Shirley. They always say this, they have this line. They say marriage actually brings out the worst mm -hmm. in you. They actually say marriage is designed to get worse before it gets better. Facts. Right? So it's gonna bring out the worst in you. So. Just, I just wanted to start there yeah. before we kind of went into but it, it's, just for context. Well, it's, it's, it's in the case of, let's say that infidelity, the Bible gives you an open door. If, you, if your spouse cheat on you, you can walk away from that marriage. We, we don't have enough stand power, just to be honest with you. Because I would agree. It could be like some simple stuff. Like, I mean some simple stuff that we walk away from. Like, give me an example of something that you just, that it doesn't have to do with infidelity, that you would feel like would be a reason to walk away from a marriage? Wife not have, wanting to have sex with you. Okay. Wife not wanting to have sex with you, that's a real valid point. At what point would you say would be the moment where you say, I'm, it's, it's done? How much grace you have, a year of it? Man. Two years of it? I don't, it's like it's like I never it's it's like I never been up under that kind of pressure, so I can't even tell you let me how say much this, grace. Because if it's a year, a lot of people are gonna be divorced. A year you know, is it's, crazy. But it's many people that have those you know those time periods of of no sex. Yeah. Now now let me put this into it. What if she was dealing with an illness? Do you have grace for that? Yes. And if she can't have sex with you. Do you have grace for that for five years? If she's dealing with an illness for five years. Yeah, and she just cannot have sex physically. Wow. Because if, if somebody was on my podcast in, in the Bahamas, that that's their story. Ah, oh, man. And, and see, you know, I would say, too, I want to say yes. I want to, ideally, I want to say yes. But I even think the phase of my life matters. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so if you're if doing it at 50s, this age. Yeah. I've been married to my woman for 15 years, five years happens. I don't want to say that I'm going to leave my wife. Right. I mean, first year marriage, you know, you telling me I can't have sex for the first five years. I can't say I'm the same brother. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's all these variables. I, 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 so I don't know. That's true. I talked to a lady that, uh, that DM'd me that said her husband was dealing with the illness. And for 17 years, they didn't have sex. 17. 17 years. And she cheated on him uh, with somebody she knew in the past. Is that even cheating at that point? That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like. It's just eating. They ain't cheating. It's eating. <laughs> just trying to survive at that point. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, we think about this stuff and I'm like, wow, that is, that is absolutely crazy. Like, I don't know the answer to that. It's like, because at the end of the day, if God told you to marry that person, then God knew that that person would be dealing with whatever it was that they were dealing with. And hopefully the omniscient God knew that you had the grace to cover that thing. Because there's some people that ain't had sex and they ain't married and they ain't had sex in 25 years. I've had people that came to me and said, I've been abstinent for 30 years. And I said, that's not a testimony. It's just not a testimony. Because <laughs> it just, it just sounds it sound like 30 years. It's like, why haven't you? Like, right. what's, what, what's going on with relationships? Right. Are, you, are you too picky? Are you too this or what? Let's just talk about it because I believe they can uncover other stuff. Because at the end of the day, if that's your desire and you haven't had that met, if you want to be married and you want to do that and you've been abstinent for 30 something years, I always say, well, how has that been working for you? Uh, do you actually masturbate? Do you have every toy collection ever created? You know, like, how are you coping with it? You know, but when you talk about people that, when we talk about grace, how much is too grace? 
it's crazy because when you talk about grace, it's also synonymous with forgiveness. And and they asked Jesus a question, how much should I forgive my, 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 my brother who sinned against me? Seven times? He said 70 times seven. Well, we're not doing the math and say 490 times, but we go and look. We go, hey, listen, at the end of the day, if I married you, married you, we took a vow. Now, if you're talking about somebody that's just selfish, that's a different story. At that point, you got to say, listen, this is the this is not bringing out the best of me. You haven't you're you you don't you're not dealing with any trauma. You have nothing. You just don't want to have sex. You just you're just punishing me at this point. And I'm not I'm not signing up for a marriage where you are physically punishing me because my body is yours. Your body is mine, but you're saying that I can't have access to my body at this point. So okay, well, I, I think I came to I, I took that. That's what I do. I take words. <laughs> and I summarize things I draw from it because what you said and what I got from that is that when it becomes toxic is when somebody with intention yep. begins to neglect you yep. at that point. Because I think that is very different. You talking about sickness hits, yep. you know, life comes at you. That's way different than when somebody operating with intention to be able to try to put you in a space. And... That's what I mean by is bringing out the worst in you because the worst in you go. So now I got, so now how, how am I supposed to manage this place? I'm you, you just don't want, you just saying you're not going to do this. And like, what am I supposed to do? Can we go to counseling? I don't want to go to counseling. So you don't want to go to counseling. Like you don't want, you don't want to work on it. You don't even want to get better. Irreconcilable difference. That's where that comes in. Like, this is irreconcilable difference because you don't want to change it mm -hmm. and you just, you don't want to do nothing. You just want to keep me miserable. You want to be married to me for whatever benefit you see, but you don't want nothing to change. Well, at that point, I know for a fact, God is going to give you grace to be like, son, you did great. Especially if you didn't say, let me go step out and I'm going to go cheat. You say, listen, I feel like my morality is going to compromise if I keep going through this. Just common sense. So at the end of the day, I've waited. It's been X amount of time. You're saying you don't want to have sex. You don't want to even go to counseling to deal with why, why you don't want to. This just ain't going to work. So I love you, but this is not the best situation for me. I'm filing for divorce. But what I, a lot of stuff that people are getting divorced from is just silly stuff. Like, we grew apart, but it's because of stuff that you really didn't really, like, go back and, my whole thing is if you get a divorce, did you exhaust every resource on trying to make it work? Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to be accountable to your kids. You're going to have to talk to your kids if y'all have kids. You got to be accountable to God. You got to be accountable to yourself and say, you know what? I did everything I could to make this relationship work, and it just didn't work. And that's where you get peace. I had peace when I divorced my wife. I had so much peace. I said, it's a crazy thing. And I said, God, teach me how to divorce my wife with grace. As the exact words I said, teach me how to divorce my wife with grace. And I said, if I'm successful in this, I said, I'm never going to tell anybody this because they're going to like, how are you going to divorce your wife with grace? And how are you going <laughs> to, that don't even make sense. I said, if I'm successful, I'm going to know it by the fruit. She will always be cool with me. We'll always be friends. It will never be any bad blood. I've talked to my ex-wife about a woman that I dated right after her. And she was like, ah, why you let her do that? Why? You know, you, you would never allow a woman to treat you like that. What is this? And we talk, I know I did this. I feel like God got back at me because of the way I treated you. Like even my ex-wife, I didn't, I wasn't, people were so shocked that we got divorced because we had a really great relationship. Mm -hmm. Like we was cool. We didn't argue, we didn't do none of that stuff. It was just cool. And then when we got divorced, I got divorced saying this is, I felt like my marriage was the cursed fig tree. It wasn't producing the fruit in season. And so I said, this just didn't, it wasn't bearing fruit. I couldn't live out my purpose. I couldn't do none of this stuff. And I just said, and I talked to her, I said, listen, we need to get a divorce. And she was just like, ah, oh, you just, you, come on. You, you. I said, we're going to meet with our counselors. We're going to tell them that. I'm going to tell them we're getting a divorce. Went there the next day, told them, hey, listen, we'll get a divorce. Can you at least wait 60 days and then, and just, and just be alone. Don't make any hasty decisions. I said, I respect y'all. I'll submit to that. I'll wait 60 days. After 60 days, I said, I'm going to get a divorce. And so in the whole process, my, my ex-wife was like, okay, cool. Like she didn't argue, she didn't fight it. She didn't like, you ain't finna divorce me. She was like, okay. And, and I was like, wow, this is awkward. And so, <laughs> and, so, and so in the whole process of the divorce thing, it was just cool. I was like, what do you want? She told me what she wanted. I said, you can have that. Cool. Boom. You can have everything. I'll start all over. Uh, which what, what makes this whole thing uh, 
a full circle of experience of me getting this house is because I'm like, wow, I remember leaving her everything so you can have everything. And now here my start over and she's a part of the process of me getting this new house. And I felt like I was like, is this like an ultimate flex for her, you know, in front of her? But she knew my intention. She was like, oh, no, you ain't even like that. I said, I didn't know how you would take this. And she was like, well, I know your heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't no big deal or whatever. And she said, I'm proud of everything you accomplished. But again, I showed her the video that I did with Joey Greco, and she said, one thing I love most about you is when you're in your God space, that's when I really see who you really are. And she said that in that video, you didn't throw blame on me at all. You took full responsibility. And I said, that's because no matter what you did do or didn't do, I cheated. That's on me. You know what I'm saying? It, that's 100% on me. We can all say, this is why. This is what led to it. And that has value to it. But at the end of the day, she never cheated back on me. And I gave her every reason to cheat on me. You know what I'm saying? I even encouraged her. She said, the only reason why you want me to cheat is because is, is you want me to be like you or whatever. And I was just like, I just want somebody. Misery loves company, so come yeah. join me. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I'm saying at the end of the day is that if we do relationships right, we love properly, we give each other grace, then we can have healthy relationships and our legacies can be impacted by seeing mommy and daddy together and been together for 10 years and 15 years and 20 years and 30 years. We just don't have enough of that. So now <clears throat> you have divorced you seem to still be, you know, operating in this this way where now you still open, you know, to to marriage and and and, and a whole new wife. Is one, that true? One thousand percent. I understand so you, so the value like, of marriage. You single and like, single, single, and Man, you don't my see whole pocket. You don't see, well, you don't see now, that shirt. Now, that shirt. Now, now, now you got to unbutton that. Come over here with a silk shirt, a butt button down. Let, let that top one loose. Let him know. Let, let, let him know. My man trying to catch. Hey, Y'all see the little taco meat. <laughs> but, but no, I did. I did. Um, that's what the whole podcast is about. Mm. I say journey with me as I discover, uncover, and recover love. The discovery phase was who is the terrorist after this divorce? Who is the terrorist after feeling the shame of the mismanagement of a woman's heart? More specifically, a black woman's heart. I dealt with a lot of shame from that. Um, who, who, who is he now? What does this these dating streets look like right now. Women operate differently from when I was 28 and got married. What does this look like? What are the, some of the needs of women now? You know, um, that's the discovery phase. And then I said, uh, the uncovery phase is when I say, all right, I'm, I'm healed. I feel like I, I, I can operate in a marriage selflessly um, and be able to cultivate words like that, cultivate my wife. What does that look like? And then um, I say shaking trees and see what kind of fruit falls out. See what happens when you date a woman. See when, like I even talked about earlier, where I was about to marry this woman. I was extremely intentional. I said, this is the woman I want to marry. We talked about it. We were all on the same page. And my love scared us. She said, I've never met a man that that was so intentional and that was so healthy. You know what I'm wow. saying? She said, I, have I don't even know how to respond to this. You know, and I was just like, what in the world? And we was going through pre premarital counseling. Uh, I did an episode called Healing from Heartbreak. We were doing, uh, we went through pre premarital counseling where I said, let's do this right. I want to go through counseling before I even propose. Then after I propose, I want to go through premarital counseling. And then after we get married, we're going to stay in marriage counseling. I said, we finna fireproof this thing. Mm. And so she, in December, she was just like, I just, I don't feel like I'm suitable to be a wife. I don't, I just don't. I was like, no, we're going to work together. I'm going you know, to show you unconditional love. I don't care what you feel. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And she was just like, I just, I just can't. And I was like, wow. She said, would you rather me do this now or be a runaway bride? Mm. And I said, I'd rather you do this now. Wait, what she put on you for you to be acting like that, trying to make this I, woman away? I just love that. That's who I was going to marry. I just, I, it was so many things that were in alignment with us. And it was like, this, this is my wife. Like, this was, it was so effortless. It was like we were dating each other and she was just checking off boxes that she didn't even know she was checking off and vice wow. versa. We used to keep lists of confirmations of things that we told God that we wanted and we would just, I was like, what, where are we at now? What confirmation are we at now? Number 23, you know what I'm saying? It was all these things. I was like, okay, I would be a fool not to take all these signs and say this got to be the one. And mm. I was like, and I'm, I'm telling you, this happened over a course of like three months. And it was wow. like, yeah, it was, it was, it was quick. And I was like, hmm, all right. Cause I had to check myself. If you met everything that you were looking for, 
would you be willing to pull the trigger? Yeah. You know, and I said, these dating streets ain't, I don't, because I'm telling you, like, the platform I have, a lot of men be like, man, if I was you, I'd be out here, I'd be smashing all these women, I'd be doing this. I they said, that's, always say that. Yeah, I'd be like, that's not, but that's not me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like I don't find value in collecting women as 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 sex objects. It's, it's, it's just, it makes me feel less than. You know, if I start mm-hmm. operating in the, in the unhealed version of myself, it's like I just went back to years that God has been healing my heart and I went back and regressed. And then on top of that, you know, we talking to these successfully married couples, these professionals in the yeah. industry. It's like we know better to the 10th power. Exactly. <laughs> so at exactly. this point, Really, like, you really, I mean, the writing is on the wall. You yeah, really the writing the is yeah. on the wall, It just man. don't make sense. And so, and so I pulled the trigger and I said, hey, let's go through pre-pre-marital counseling. I have every intention to marry you. I never told her the date. Uh, but I said it'd be really soon when I uh, popped the question. And like I said, she was like, hey, this is, this scares me. I never met anybody that's that clear, that's intentional. And um, even in our pre premarital counseling, I, the first session, I was like, talk to the husband and wife team. It was like, so tell me a little bit about you. I cheated on my last wife. I cheated multiple times. I did this, this. They was like, who just leads off like that? They was Coming like, out what clean. in the world? It was like, hold oh, on. Trauma dumping on yeah, y'all. Yeah, I just told them straight <laughs> up. And they was just like, Okay, and so we got to talk, and it was like, I have never met a dude like that. And like I said, because one thing that I've learned, um, Paul says it best. He says, I boast in my weakness. Well, the reason is, is that I know what God has delivered me from, and I knew how ratchet I felt when I was living that life that I said I'll never return to that moment. But yeah. how I became who I am today very clear at what I desire, very clear at who I am, very clear at the type of woman that I want, is I was very clear about the hurt, the trauma, the pain, the the lack of integrity that I once had to say, oh yeah, that's 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 a little boy. When he was a little boy, he spoke as a boy, he acted like a boy, now he's a man, he's putting those childish things behind. I put those childish things behind. And so I said, this is who I'm gonna be for my, my future wifey. And so I lead with the faults of what I've done in the past so that you can know who I am now. You know? But so I mean, this is the thing. You you talked about because I can imagine the young lady that you was you know considering for marriage could be, would be intimidated. Like you said, you intentional. You got things lined up. You got this growing platform. You becoming literally more successful by the minute. Right. And I would imagine you're going to continue to go in that upper trajectory. So are you telling me that you don't have any doubts whatsoever that you may one day find yourself again? land in another woman's bed or have another woman in your bed? No, because I don't have the need for it. Another thing that I did in 2020, I began to discipline my fe- my flesh by taking a vow of abstinence. Wow. And so in, tw- in December, I said, you know what? I said, sex can't be that. Like, how many women do you really want to have sex with? Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the day. And then I had this little scare moment. I had this scare moment uh, with this woman the month before. What led me to abstinence, it was this woman, she... It's an interesting story. So I just started my podcast. I had about 20,000 subscribers at that time. She um, she slid in my DMs. We got to talking and whatnot. We went on a couple of dates. And I would just say, meet me at the restaurant. We'll meet. And it'd be really short and sweet. And then one day she was like, you're always just rushing. you always just come meet with me. And then you just like, just really quick. And I said, all right, when, I, when I, I'm, I'm in LA right now, I'm shooting a, a proposal. When I come back, we can, I'll pick you up and we'll go out to eat. I picked up, went uh, a few miles down the street, we ate. We sat down, she said, I Googled your net worth. I said, huh? I said, how much you say I'm worth? She said, 3.5 million. I said, whoa, shoot. I said, boy, I'm so glad. I said, I said, cause I'm only worth about 3.5 million pennies. Cause I sure ain't worth no 3.5 million dollars. She's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I said, no, for real, trust me. I am nowhere near a million. I'm not even a millionaire at all. She was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. I said, well, Google it now and tell me what it says. She Googled it. She said 6.6 million. I said, wow, I done made, I done almost doubled everything from the, from last week. And she was like, so she's thinking I'm playing. I'm like, listen, don't believe everything on the internet. I am not worth that at all. She was like, yeah, 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 whatever. I said, no, I'm not. So I go to drop off. She was like, gosh, can you just, can we just sit in the carport area and talk? And I was like, well, I gotta get ready to go. I need to go back to the studio. I gotta work on stuff. I gotta edit what I just shot and all this. She said, can we just talk? Can you just pull over to the side and talk? 
So, all right, so I pulled over, we talked, and then she said, now you can leave. I said, cool. So I went to drop off at the front door, and when I went to go drive, these poles that were outlining the porta cachet is scratched the side of my, my truck up. And I was like, oh my God, I just dented my truck, because I couldn't see it, they were really, really low. And I was like, man, God, dog, I'm gonna have an insurance claim. She said, just come upstairs. I said, no, nah, I'm finna go. I'm finna go back to my office, I'm finna work. Can you just come upstairs? I said, no, I'm finna go to my office, I'm finna work. The terrace, why are you so stubborn? Just come upstairs. I said, for what? I don't want to go. Come. All right, so I went and parked. We walked in. She walked straight to her room. She changed, came back with these little, them little I call them little house shorts. Those shorts that the girls wear that stop right below mm. their booty where it crosses to their leg threshold. So the bad devil. Yeah, just it's right so there. That. Yeah, just right there. Just stop right there. You'd be like, if you just do like this, I'm going to see your booty cheek. And so, and so she came out with that, and I was like, and I was like, I do not want to have sex with this woman. I don't know what she's doing. I'm mad. I'm going to my truck up. This is crazy. So I'm sitting there with my face in my hands like this. She said, uh, she, she comes, she starts rubbing on my arm. She said, come on, let's just chill. Well, you know, just take your mind away from it. I said, man, I just don't. Nah, man. I said, I didn't have a truck up, this, this, this. She said, come on, come on. She kept rubbing on me, grabbing me. I said, all right. So I laid her down. I began kissing her. I laid her down. Then, like I said, she had little house shorts on. I put my hand between her legs, touched her vagina. She didn't have no underwear on. She said, get out. I said, what just happened? She said, get out. I got up. I walked. I said, I done missed all the clues. I said, the game done changed. Right. Right. I said, I done missed every, what is going on? These mixed signals or something. So I, I didn't say nothing. I walked to the door. She walked me to the parking garage. I get in my truck and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to reverse engineer everything. And I said, she Googled my network. She said this. I did. This lady going to try to extort me. Wow. I said, oh my God. I said, oh, I just broke down crying. I said, what in the world? I'm so stupid. Why would I even go to an apartment if I knew that this, 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 this? So I just started like, I just started crying. I picked up the phone. I said, listen. She said, why did you do that? Why'd you do that? I said, well, because you you changed. You came with the house shorts. You did this. You started rubbing all on my arm. You was doing, I didn't want to have sex. I didn't. I said, but I, how am I supposed to know you doing this? What? I just, I told you that I wasn't trying to have sex with nobody and this, this, this. I said, but Maybe for them, but for me, you was acting like something. I was sitting there, and she was just like, I just can't believe it. Now you're trying to say it's my fault. I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just, I said, okay, I can't say nothing right. So a couple of days went by. Uh, I called her a couple of times. She's like, just give me time to think. So then I didn't call her. I was like, I'm just waiting for the police to show up. They're going to show up. They're gonna, she going she gonna to do something. Luckily, none of that ever happened. But she ended up calling me, said, now you ain't calling me. I said, you told me I need to give you time to think, and now I'm giving you time to think, and now you feel like I done kicked you to the curb. I don't know what to do. Just tell me what I need to do. She said, I need to come see you. I said, oh, God. I said, I don't think that's a good idea. She said, no, let me, let me, wow, now you're not going to see me? I said, okay. And in my brain, I was like, well, if I don't allow her to see me, what if she calls the police? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was just in this crazy situation. Extreme manipulation. Oh, my God. So then... She came to me and she was like, listen, when you touched me, I was like, you know what I wanted with you. I didn't want anything physical unless we have a relationship and all that type of stuff. And when you touched that, I said, I didn't even want to come up to your place. I didn't want to do nothing. And you rubbing all on me. You came with the little house shorts. That, that's this is sending a different message. And I just had this whole little conversation. And I was just like, she was like, well, can we just start? Or can we be cool? And I was like, I don't know about that. Cause if I can't if I can't read you, it I it just it just throws me off. So she was like, just just please just don't like kick me to the curb base. This would be cool. Well, the next month I said I know how I can fix all this because I'm into I have entered into a space that I just not privy to. I don't have no experience with. I'm in this space right now where people see me as something that I don't even see myself as. Mm -hmm. And this woman has Googled my network, believe I'm worth 3.5 million. And I wish I had three 3,500 in my account at that time. I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? So I said, forget it. I'm finna take sex off the table. I'm finna find the value in myself. I'm finna get to knowing who I really am. I'm about to consecrate my flesh, discipline my flesh, and I'm finna walk this thing of abstinence out. And so that's what led for me to take a vow of abstinence I did on my podcast. I brought this pastor on. We did this whole little moment on there. And I said, hey, you know, I'm out the game. Now, throughout the time or whatever, I've fallen off from time to time or whatnot, but my heart is still committed to abstinence. Um, and so the reality of that was, Again, being in those spaces as men, 
not even understanding that all she had to do was just claim rape. And here mm -hmm. I am it's over with. defending myself. Like, and I would literally, in the way I operate, I would just said it. I would have said the exact same story to the judge. Hey, listen, yeah, I rubbed a vagina. I did. She didn't have no drawers on. And she mm -hmm. did this, 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 this. I would tell, they'd be like, well, well. And I said, she told me this. She told me to get up. I got up. I walked out the door. I don't know anything I would have done differently. If you asked me to do it again, I would do the same thing the same way. I said, but now, knowing her personality, I just would have never went upstairs. You know what I'm saying? But the smart thing about it is for men to not put yourself in uncompromising situations to where a woman can say anything to you or say anything about you, and now you got to defend your character. Because they never, the, the innocence of you is never amplified as loud as the guilty of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even the accusation is never going to be it's going to be louder than but I didn't do it. That's you know enough what I'm to, it's enough to ruin you. Yeah, you'd be like, ah, no. So I was just so I felt like God allowed that opportunity to happen for me for me to operate in wisdom to say, I right, I'm going to take you somewhere and take you to another world. I'm going to take you to another dimension and I need you to make sure that you're very wise about where you place yourself and put boundaries around you. So a lot of times I'm just working. I'm in my office. I'm working all the time. And, um, and it's, and it has made me a little gun shy about meeting new people or dating people. I don't be going to people's houses. You know what I'm saying? I just yep. be like, I, I, I'm telling you, I be like, mm -mm, nope, nope. Because now I got a lot to lose. I got and, a lot to well, lose. Well, the thing is, there's some great women out there now, but there's, yeah. some, there's some demons out there. Yeah. And the thing about it, you talking about, you talking about your net worth, but it's women who will get you caught up in something for a lot less. Yep. Yeah. For a lot less. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad that you're now in this space to where you are protecting yourself. Yeah, got to. Yeah. Got to. And I, and, and, and I mean, that's just the reality of, you know, kind of being out. And I, I guess that's why, too, a lot of the men have been communicating to us. You know, it's way different, you know, and even easier to find a woman when you're early in that building phase and you just, you know, you still swinging that hammer. Your status ain't all the way there. Yeah. You're building your money. And it's a whole different playing field than when you already are either arriving or on your way. Or when it's perceived that you arrive. Right. Even, on your even way. perceived. <laughs> right. Which is what happens when you get up online. Yeah. But my, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I'm man, let me tell you, Latez, I'm super impressed with your story, your testimony, your mm -hmm. vulnerability as well on the platform because you taught me a lot. Facts. Um, and I'm sure the people done learn a whole bunch today. Matter of fact, I, I wanna ask y'all this too. If y'all want another collab right now with Harley Initiated and Dev Future Wifey Podcast, I want y'all to just put on there another one. I like another that. One. I want y'all like to just put in the comments another one. But man, I really appreciate you coming up here. Facts. Man, I thank y'all. Listen, I just want to honor y'all because y'all doing the doggone thing. Like I said, y'all are, like you said earlier, y'all are new to these uh, YouTube streets. Uh, but y'all are making great impact. And that's what you can always look at. It's not about the numbers, it's about impact. One of the things that I didn't want to do was chase numbers. Because when you begin to chase numbers, you be like, well, so-and-so got 200,000 and I only got 20,000. But you don't understand that you're 20,000, you're causing impact, you're changing lives, you're, you're giving people hope. And that's what Harley Initiate is doing, is having these relevant conversations that's causing impact for the culture. Let's do it, man. You got me turned up. Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Yes. And that is the goal. And listen, I hope you guys have been impacted here as well. And if you have, please go ahead, show love, subscribe to this channel, join the membership. Y'all see, we are growing our YouTube membership. Our YouTube members have asked us to bring this brother here. Our YouTube members Top are requested. asking us what type of topic. They telling us the topics they want, and we are bringing it to you guys the best way we know how. And listen, y'all already know, baby, hardly initiated, we are out.